So as a kid, I always made comics by stapling pieces of papers together to eventually creating digital comics on Instagram, to now having my very first graphic novel, Mish the Bad Demon, now out on bookshelves of Barnes and Nobles and other bookstores around the world. So in today's video, I wanted to talk about how I published my first graphic novel and how you can too. So first off, hi, my name is Michelle Lamb and I'm originally an artist who went to school for animation and worked in the LA animation industry industry for some time as a storyboard artist and as a storyboard artist a lot of the skills you use are pretty transferable to comic making so when I was not working as a storyboard artist at work I would spend some time doing my own comics on Instagram that eventually caught the eye of an editor so the way that I landed my first book deal is honestly not the norm to be quite frank but it's not impossible either especially in this day and age of social media. It probably is becoming more normal for agents and editors to find potential new talent through social media platforms, which is why starting some sort of social media presence might not be a bad idea. So when it comes to discoverability, you can start the process of publishing your first comic book in two ways. First is, of course, having a presence online that focuses on making comics. You can hope an editor or agent will reach out to you, but it's not always going to be guaranteed this way. Or you can reach out to different agencies for representation when it comes to publishing a comic book. Even if an editor reaches out to you first, you will still most likely eventually need a literary agent. So let's move on to the next step after you figured out that you do want to publish a book. So first, you're gonna have to find an agent. For me, I was lucky enough to be connected to my agent through the editor I was working with. However, I would highly recommend for artists to seek out their own representation through their own research because your agent is gonna be the one who understands all the contracts, terms, and things that you don't know about in the publishing world. So how? Try to look through the graphic novels that are your favorite. Google the artist online and add agent or represented by to the end of the Google search or see if the artist's website includes that information. Then you Google the agent slash agency that the artist has and start making a list of all of the ones that you collect. You might not be able to land the same exact agent as that artist, but it could be another person who is a part of that same agency at least. So getting an agent is a whole process of seeing if your interests even align or fit. If the stars do align, you'll most likely sign a contract with them and ensure what percentages of the deal slash money made will be allocated to them. 15% is usually a good baseline for advances and royalties and if your book gets picked up in another country there is a chance it could be 20 percent but anything more than 15 percent for general advances and royalties i would definitely question so after you do land on an agent you gotta brainstorm some ideas and let's get to that so after you signed with an agent it's good to send them around five book ideas which you have in mind and see which ones might have the best success potential for me i was reached out to by an editor who asked if i could make a middle grade graphic novel so from the get-go i already knew i was making something middle grade but the story ideas were still open i knew i wanted to do something with a demon angel theme so i wrote five different ideas in which what eventually became mish the bad demon speaking of ideas i'd like to thank the sponsor of today's video millanote so millanote is a tool that you can use to create mind maps mood boards and basically organize all of your thoughts jottings inspirations and research for any of the projects that you have in your mind and for me personally i always need a way to organize my thoughts for graphic novels and millanote is a great place for me to do that because i tend to have a lot of story ideas character ideas music ideas so it's very important for me to have them in one place for me i've been using millanote to plan my future young adult graphic novel the thing I love about Milanote is that there are templates you could choose from to fit your project's needs so you don't have to just make a mind map from scratch or from nowhere. So I personally love the option to add in music 
and videos because I feel like when I do that, I can easily remember what inspired me to create these pieces and I can use the drawing tool to write down why I liked using this audio. So please check out Millanote if you haven't had already. It's free with no time limit to try it out. It's in the links below. Anyway, thank you Millanote for sponsoring today's video and let's get back to the video. So then the next step would be building a pitch packet for the idea that both you and your agent like. Your agent will first build a packet about you as an artist and why you're the one who's fit to tell this story. You are also going to build your own pitch packet for your book itself and will run through various revisions with your agent before it gets sent to a publisher. So finally, you will then pitch your book idea to various publishers and depending on how things go, some places might do a first look deal where they will put an offer for you exclusively showing your pitch to them first. They will offer you a deal, but if you don't take the deal and want to see what other offers are, there's a chance you will lose out on that deal entirely. So it's kind of like a gamble because you don't know if your first look deal is the best offer you can get, but that's why an agent who has had years of experience should be able to know when there's a good offer versus a bad one. So for Mish the Bad Demon, we landed on a two book six figure deal, meaning I would publish two books of Mish in a series with advance and milestone payments that would equal up to six figures. So once a deal is accepted, you will usually go through a game plan with your editor and agent of what they plan to do with the book. This will be formulated in a contract that might take a few weeks to a few months to be delivered. And for me, this happened at the peak of COVID. So there were some bumps along the road that slowed down this process, but hopefully things don't take that long nowadays, but correct me if I'm wrong for any comic artists who just landed a book deal. So next is moving on to the outline of the book where you write the beginning, middle, and end. At this point, your editor is the one who will be primarily working with you to edit the book's contents. Your agent who previously edited your pitch packet kind of passes on the baton to your editor, so the editor should be the one you go to for any details about your book's story. Outlines can take like five to six passes from my experience, and it will differ from person to person. So after your outline gets Gets approved, you will move on to taking a pass at the rough sketches. Some people work differently where they write an entire script first as the outline, but for me, I have a storyboarding thumbnailing mindset. So I will write the outline first and then do an entire rough sketch pass in thumbnails like a storyboard. Thankfully, my editor was willing to work with whatever way works best with artists. I don't think every editor will be like this, but it was good that I had one who was flexible with different workflows. So for me, the rough sketches also took around six to seven passes before they really ever finally get approved. And a lot of the process is really killing your babies, killing your ideas, which is very similar to storyboarding, where you have to be very flexible with letting some of your ideas that are not working die. So while you're also working on your book, you'll be working with a book designer who will help make sure your book's artwork adheres to the template of the book when it gets printed physically. For me, I make a huge jump from thumbnails to final art because I personally don't like trying to trace over a cleaned up sketch as my way of making art. I find this leaves room for spontaneity and liveliness in my work. So when I do the line art phase of the book, I would say that there are usually less than three passes for these because it's just a render out version of what was already approved in the rough sketch phase. And then next in the final art phase is coloring, which, you know, I highly recommend for people to hire a colorist in the beginning of negotiating your contract. It should be at the expense of the publishing house and not yours. And a colorist definitely helps expedite the process of finishing your book so much faster. So I highly recommend one to save time and also giving another artist a chance to get work and exposure. As the author and illustrator, I have no say or control about my colorist contracts slash deal with the publisher, and I usually have to communicate with them through my book designer instead of directly. I really don't think colorists get fairly compensated and deserve more and better, so while coloring is the colorist's job, I still go in myself to make edits and adjustments to their work so they don't have to juggle all of that on their plate as much. Please don't mind the clutter in this background. I'm kind of in a work and progress of trying to organize this media stand so it doesn't look like this. But you know, a video's gotta get done, so we gotta 
finish this video. So in the edits and final pass phase, thankfully text and dialogue is inputted by the editor slash book designer, but it's your job to deliver what the dialogue is to them in a clear format. For me, I just export a PDF of whatever stage my book is in and use the preview tool on a Mac to add text of what I intend for each panel. The editor and book designer though takes that dialogue, they may edit it and they will put it into Adobe InDesign and this is the part of the book where you will be back and forthing a lot to check final dialogue and catch any errors or mistakes in the art before it gets sent to printers. So finally, your book gets published. Let's move to a nicer background for this one. So finally, your book gets published. Congratulations, hooray. So next you might be wondering what happens after your book gets approved to print. So you might end up doing pre-orders to gauge how receptive audiences are to your book. And to be honest, I did not get much numbers or statistics in this realm. So I wasn't sure how well my book was performing in the beginning, but the key is to be constantly promoting your book. After that, your book finally gets published to the real world and gets sent to bookstores where people can physically pick them up. And for some people, they may do book tours. They are things that could happen after your book is released to help market the book and allow your audience to meet you in real life at different bookstores. But unfortunately, you don't get paid to go on book tours and it's kind of work that you have to do on your own to help get your book out there. Like a publisher will help you, but it's your job to kind of carry on the rest. A lot of marketing will also be on you. So sure, your publishing house is responsible to market it a bit, but after working in studios and publishing my first book, I've just come to learn that you can never rely on a larger company to promote your work to the amount that you do. So that's why followers and having an online presence can be helpful if you don't have a name in the publishing space already. And then afterwards, now what? You might be feeling a little bit hopeless at times when you receive a bad review or you feel numbers don't do well because trust me it's a different world out there for books versus animation industry versus social media it's definitely important to remember to not let the numbers and awards or book reviews get to you because let's remember this is your first book but the thing that i've learned is that there are so many different types of wins that you know not everyone is going to have the same sort of success after their book is released a lot of people have different types of wins and one for me is that it really went international. And that's why I'm happy to share that Mish the Bad Demon is in the US and Canada, the United Kingdom, Mexico, and eventually France, Germany, and maybe more. So anyway, I hope you found today's video helpful in teaching you how to potentially publish your very first comic. I think that at the end of the day, everybody's journey is going to be different. But if I had to summarize the major steps that I would recommend that an artist should follow, I definitely think that finding an agent is the most important one. Second is going to be having a really good book idea and knowing what audience you're going to be targeting them for. And then third is definitely having a good marketing plan for your book when it comes out because as much as your book is going to be beautiful and gorgeous and have a great story for all to enjoy inside at the end of the day it's unfortunate to say that if you do not have a good marketing plan a really good book can still you know flop and i feel like because a lot of artists are not really business oriented naturally it's kind of a different muscle you're gonna really have to flex which is why i feel like it's important to start getting into that mindset before your book is even released so that by the time it's out you can talk about it comfortably and know what are the things that you can say to you know market it so with that said if you haven't read mish the bad demon already please check it out in the links below it is available once again in the u.s can Canada, United Kingdom, Mexico, and soon France and Germany. So check it out in the links below if you would like to get a copy and read it. Even if you are not a middle schooler, maybe you want to read the book and just see what it was like to have a physical book that an artist maybe similar to you has been able to publish. But anyway, thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. Thanks to Milanote for sponsoring and I will see you all in the next one.